You are listening to Danny on What The Heck Podcast. This is the place where I share my experience, knowledge and skills. Welcome along, Michael Heppel. I've got your name right. <laughs> Usually I get people to introduce themselves because they can't. So uh, we've got Michael all the way from the UK. Uh, we just had a, a bit of a chat before we went live. And uh, he said that it's nice talking to people on the bottom of the earth who are hanging on for dear life. <laughs> right, we'll get straight into it. We've got 12 questions. Uh, they're, they're kind of random. I know what they are, but uh, I don't know what the next question is. So the first question is, what was your first job? I was a roofing contractor because my dad was a roofing contractor. And he said, when I was nine years old, son, one day this will all be yours. And when you're nine years old, the prospect of owning two vans and six ladders is quite exciting, Danny. So <laughs> I was like, oh, I'm going to be a roofer. So I left school as quickly as I could. I left school when I was 15 and I started to be a roofer. And after about a week, I realized I'd made a terrible decision. Wow. I definitely, definitely should not have decided to be a roofer. So I am. Um, so then I did, I did the job. I did it for six years, did an apprenticeship, learned how to put roofs on and then started to follow my passion. So that was my first job. I was a roofer. Yeah, so well, my... It's if, a you funny like, if you would like, if you would like somebody to come along, give you a nice um, job with a roof. Estimates are always free. Yeah, my my stepfather was a painter, and I finished up being a house painter for ten years. There you go. Uh, yeah, you have to follow your family instincts sometimes, but for a week, well done. <laughs> okay, I did it for <clears> six <throat> years. It was a week. It was a week that I re- before I realized I didn't want to do it, but I did it for six years. I was twenty-two when I stopped. Oh, wow. And any mishaps along the way? Cause it's... Yeah, loads, loads. I had a really bad fall once. I um, Actually, the weird thing was I once fell off a roof that was three stories high, fell right from the top, landed in the garden, and there wasn't anything, not a scratch. And wow. I looked up, looked up at my mates, and they were just all absolutely doubled up laughing. They thought it was hilarious that I'd fallen off. And then another time I fell one story, but I had slates on my shoulder. Welsh yes. slates, and I fell, and they slashed my hands and my wrists, and I was in a pretty bad way after that one. Didn't wasn't quite sure whether I wanted to go back to work, but I did, and I and I recovered. Wow. And I've got all six fingers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've all got that problem. All right, question number two: If you could choose anything to do for a day, what would it be? Now, just to make sure I've got that right. If you could choose to do anything for a day, what would it be? I'd be a rock star. I'd be on stage at Wembley Stadium in front of 80,000 people being the front man of a band. Well, it's kind of ironic in a way because before the show, I thought I'd do a few searches and I thought, well, maybe I could replace the background of my picture of one of you. And I found this one. It looked like you were a rock star and it had brilliant across it and all these people with their hands up. And I thought you were a rock star. Yeah, I, I was in a band. That's why I'm saying this. I what this was my, you know, if they said you could do anything and know that it would be successful, that would have been my thing. Wow. And and I was in a band and we did okay, but we never quite got there to a point. And the challenge was is that the two other guys who were in the band, one of them was a chemist and one of them worked for a building society in finance, and they never want to quit their jobs. Well, as you know, I was a roofer, so I could quit my job tomorrow and then <laughs> yeah. go back to being a roofer, whereas they had quite important jobs. So, yeah. But if it's important, ask any man on a rainy day, roofing is important. Yeah, well, but my job was secure. It was my dad's business. <laughs> hey, I've got a meeting with you right now, my phone just told me. I normally tell people to turn their phones on to silent, and there I go, I've just stuffed it up myself. Did you hear that ringing in the background? Um, A little bit, but... I mean, honestly, if you hadn't, there you go. Talk about it. <laughs> if you hadn't mentioned it, no one would have noticed. Yeah, I know I broke my own rules. Uh, what excites you about business success the most? Now, it's a bit of a business one there, so business success. What excites me about business success the most? Oh, God, isn't that a boring question? <laughs> we had a panel to decide those questions. <laughs> do you know what I would do? I, let's, let's help you with this question because that question is so obvious and so unlike you danny 
I mean, this is what the heck, isn't it? So <laughs> yeah, let's, yeah. Make, let's yeah. make the question more exciting. All right. What's, I'm, I'm all, what's the let's third flip most, it. Let's the, yeah, exactly. What's the third most exciting thing about business? That's a nice one, isn't it? I'm not answering the questions. This is your oh, okay, so, the third, so let's do the third one, because the first one's got to be, you know, being successful with your business and all that type of stuff. Second one is, is getting recognition for what you do. Everybody wants recognition. But yep. the third thing are the unexpected bonuses. Uh, yep. Opportunities so, arise. So let me just give you an example. My best friend in the world used to be a client. Or still is a client, actually, but yep. he became my best friend. Yeah. And I think that's brilliant. I would never have met that man if it hadn't been for the fact that we went to do some work with his company. Now, isn't that a great thing? And loads of my friends, if I look through my top 100 friends, when I had I had my 50th birthday party um, two and a half years ago, and I right. looked around the room, and we had about 200 people there, and I bet 150 of those people I met through work. Wow, yeah. I, I like traveling, Michael, uh, quite a lot, which you probably don't know. And I always had this thing, I travel down a road, I don't like going back the way I came. And people, and I found myself in the most amazing places, and, but the yeah. opportunities that come along the way uh, while I travel. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. But you know what, Danny, you've got to put it out there. You, you, can't, you can't keep it in. You mm -hmm. have to put it out first. It's like people say to me, oh, you seem to make friends really quickly. Do you know why? Because I put it out there. Mm. I'm chatting with people. I'm, I'm interested in people. Yeah, I want to I want to make them feel really good. I want to laugh at their jokes. I want to I want to do something for them. And then hopefully, if I'm lucky and fortunate, I might find a new person who I enjoy hanging out with. Yeah, I've got a question, um, not on the question to ask you, actually, because I watched your webinar the other day, and you said you had five power cuts within, like, 45 minutes, and then you started yeah. a webinar. <laughs> I know, honestly, it was terrifying. I'll tell you what it was, Danny. The reason yeah. what happened was, our, it was our dishwasher. We narrowed it down in the end to the dishwasher. And yeah. because the dishwasher was on an automatic program, we reset, reset everything. And then suddenly it would start up again and then that would cut everything off. And we could not get our heads around what it was. So I'm trying to think, right, okay, I've got this big webinar. We're launching a new program. I had like, I think about 300 people registered yeah. and I was absolutely terrified. And then, you know, the funny thing was in the end, what happened was it switched, it flipped just a circuit. Yeah. Not the whole house, just one circuit. And my brilliant, wonderful, amazing, beautiful wife just sat at the other end of the house in the dark. Oh. No, no TV, no sound, no music, nothing at all. Because she knew if she tried to flip it back on, it could knock the whole lot out. Right. So she just, so she just sat for an hour and a half oh, in the could. dark yeah, while I did, while I did the webinar. Right. Bless her. Amazing. No, well done. Okay, when are you the happiest? Which is, uh, remember I made all these questions. When have you been the happiest? Well, when are you the happiest? Well, do you know, I, I'm a grandfather now. Look at me. Am I, I'm a grandfather. Can you believe that? Well, I'm, I'm I mean, about, I, I'm 50, so I'm probably about two years behind you. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Are you, uh, are you a grandfather? No. I've got no children. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, yeah. i tell you what, at the moment... When I'm at my happiest is when I get a chance to see my granddaughter. That it's it's unreal. It's the yep. strangest feeling where you, you have this little person who is a kind of a part of you, hmm. but they are obviously so tiny and vulnerable. And she was born um, you know, in March, so it's kind of been a very unusual time. So that's happy. Um also I'm very happy when I'm doing Lego. I love making yeah, label yeah. models. Yeah, that would do my head. Yeah, and I'm also, today, I live in the north of England, in a place called Northumberland, which is a bit like New Zealand. It's kind of, that has that lovely earthiness about it. And today, yeah. my wife and I went out for a big hike, and we stopped, and it was quite cold, and we sat on a tree stump, and we had a flask and a little miniature bottle of whiskey and a, <laughs> and a sandwich and a bit of be flatless and we ate that looked out at the view oh my goodness is oh, good on you. That. yeah i like so hiking as well types of things. yeah right, good on you. uh yeah so have you been to new zealand no but my son 
who is the father of my granddaughter, has an ambition to move there. That's what he wants because wow. he spent he spent the year in Australia and New Zealand, and he said that Australia was good and New Zealand was brilliant. He said New Zealand, <laughs> yeah. New Zealand is what Australia wants to be. Isn't that great? Mm. We, uh, my partner and I. We still can't travel, obviously, but we get away for micro weekends and we just yesterday come back from the west coast of uh, and it's just a coastline of waves smashing into rocks. And we, we try to stay as close as we can to the, the ocean and we finished up finding this caravan and uh, all night long a storm come in and we hear the ocean fell up on a ship. <laughs> but um, oh, so nice wow. to be able to just drive down the road, you know, and be able to do that sort of thing. But, you know, Danny, that's one of those things that I mean, New Zealand has that absolutely in spades. My, I've got three three cousins um, who all live in Australia and New Zealand, and they are always saying, "When you coming back to Australia next? Because then you can come to New Zealand." And I was mm-hmm. like, "We need to stop thinking like that. We need to think I'm going to come to New Zealand and then maybe go to Australia." Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Uh, I, think, I think that's the way to think about it. We're so lucky at the moment uh, with the world uh, conditions and the like. I mean, honestly, we, I'm, missing, I'm missing going to Australia because Australia is just like a, a weekend getaway for us sometimes. Um, but yeah. the people are so nice as well, and, and it's a beautiful country, and it's, it, the climate's great. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. How, long does it take, how long does it take you to get to Australia? About three and a half hours. And um, cost-wise, uh, you can normally get return flights for about six or $700 so it's it's relatively Ooh. cheap, yeah. Yeah, and then accommodations one hundred and fifty dollars a night, and you get to stay in a sort of a, a nice apartment. And you know, Melbourne, yeah, Melbourne's yeah. my favourite. Um, that's I love real... Melbourne. I do love Melbourne. Yeah. That's really cool. I used yeah, to go to I like Melbourne. The time. One of my one of my best mates who I grew up with still lives um, in Sydney, and yeah. he's got this great story where he he moved to Australia to go and work for a, one of the big big tv studios and entertainment studios and he got there and his job imagine this for a job you know when bands tour the world they finish in australia world tour is finished in australia yeah. and his job for this huge company i can't name them because you'll see why in a moment was to make sure that the bands got whatever they needed to make sure they stayed on stage yeah. so he lived he lived in a in a, an apartment on bondi beach overlooking the beach Wow. And his next his next door neighbor was Jason Donovan. Yeah. Yeah. He had it was just he said this this whole lifestyle was amazing. And mm. then he discovered cocaine. Uh, yeah, yeah. And that was that absolute end. And it just was like he had everything going yeah. from him and then discovered Coke and then was like doo, 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 and it just all felt like a house of cards over about six months. Wow. And went from having the greatest job in the world to having nothing. Yeah, drugs, eh? Yeah, yeah. Uh, never tried them. The drugs um, don't work, Danny. The drugs don't work. I know, I know. I, I've, I've never you know. Ever any drugs. How do you know? <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. a story for another day. Okay. Uh, what's the story of, of how you got? Uh, I have to read these carefully. What's the story of how you got to where you are and where you want to go? So there's two questions in the same one, really. Um, extreme luck. <laughs> I don't I believe that. You make your own luck. How I got to where I am now, where I want to get to, hopefully the luck continues. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But know, funny, funny it's, 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 again, this is one of those things. You know, I had, if you were to go back, sliding doors moments, yeah. you know, when you have that moment where somebody saw something in me that I didn't see in me. And it's a guy called Alan Percival. And I used to be a volunteer for a youth organization called the Boys Brigade. And it was, you know, uh, uh, basically it was like it was the Scouts before the Scouts. So the Boys Brigade came first. Baden Powell was a member of the Boys Brigade and he wanted to. And then he created the Scouts afterwards. So anyway, they they were a bit more successful than the Boys Brigade. (laughs) But anyway, I loved it. I was really, really I enjoyed it a lot. And I used to volunteer as a youth worker. And this amazing guy called Alan Percival could see something in me that other people couldn't. Mm. And he offered me a job, a one-year project to work with the Boys Brigade and do youth work and to do a special project managing a charity center. All these different charities come together. How we got into it, I'll tell you another day. 
Yep. And um, and I was like, oh my goodness, he's offering me this opportunity. Mm. Like, what does he see in me? I, I, it's crazy, Mickey Heppel. Why would he do that? And I remember saying to my dad, that I want to do this. It's going to be one year, and then I'll come back. And my dad said, "Son, you'll never come back. You'll never come back to doing the roofing, <laughs> because this is this is your heart. Your heart's going to be in this." I was like, "Oh, we'll see. We'll see." I tell you what, what a what an incredible opportunity and everything from that moment that was the sliding doors point where it went that way and then after that my whole life's gone that way what what age were you then about 22 23. 20, 22 yeah my, my best years were around 23 funny enough um at a major life event and then all of a sudden um because i took a new path everything changed and you know yeah, yeah. um oh right, here's a good one for you do you collect anything uh, yeah, I do. I collect Lego models. <laughs> do you build those big, big things? Yeah, well, you can see one in the background there. Oh, you right. That one there, that, that there is incredible. That is a, a great bit of kit. <laughs> this has, it's got um, six different motors in it. Oh, and huh? it all work. it all works from your mobile phone. So that wow. digger can move around, it can pick stuff up, it can do all sorts of... So yeah, so I collect Lego models. Uh, I'm a magician, so I would collect um, magic tricks, not as much anymore. But yep. probably the main thing I collect are books. I've got right. probably about one and a half thousand books around me. So that's not a green oh, screen behind office. you then? Yeah, behind me. I mean, this, some people think this is a set. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're it's it real. It's, it's real life, you know? And yeah. they kind of, you know, they go, they go right up to the top. And oh, yeah. Like, well, go on, so. pull one out. Pull one out. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I can do that. We go. What about that one there? What's uh, this? Yeah, oh, that's the best green screen of it. It's, it's, mm -hmm. Is it flip it in? in oh, yeah. yeah. It reminds me of a bad experience when I bought an audio book called Fish, and it's all in French. <laughs> and I, can't, <laughs> I can't find the English version to it in the audio. Does my well, head fish is brilliant. You can definitely get fish, not an audio. Can you not? No, and it's meant to be an awesome book, and I just can't get it. And I have book. to learn French to listen to it, I can't even learn English. That is my you must be able to get fish. I don't know, That's it might not be the New Zealand um store because some of our stuff we can't get um for America, so I, I don't know. So yeah, maybe there'll be so honestly, there'll be there'll be somebody doing an illegal download somewhere. All right, we've got more questions, and we'll keep them going because we can pass Let's them if we don't like them. Do we okay. need to speed up, Danny? Am I taking too long? It doesn't matter, mate. We've got all day. It's you who's got to get the sleep. I've got, like, it's morning over here in New Zealand. It's probably about 9.30 at night over there, is it? Yeah. Yeah. And so when you fall like asleep, we'll night. stop. Okay, let's do it. Let's go. What, what motivates you to get out of bed in the morning? My wife. Okay. Yeah. We'll keep Seriously, she, because because she wakes up and she the first thing she does, I hear her giving. She does gratitude out loud. She oh, like says thank you, thank you for being alive and thank you for the wonderful life she has and all that type of stuff. And I listen to that and I think, oh my goodness, get up and do it. Yeah. I am not a morning person. All these people who kind of think, you know, those who types of people who do the job that I do, they should all be. You know, motivational and all Tony Robbins and all that type of stuff. And yeah. I get up at four thirty and I go out and I do this. I could be better on mornings. How, how many hours sleep do you need to get each night? I need at least eight, a minimum yeah. of eight. Yeah, yeah, uh, definitely. Five. five. Well, so, well, I hope I hope that um, is good for you in your later age because let me tell yeah. you, Danny, you need more than that. You, you yeah. think you don't, but you need more. Yeah. I, I don't doubt it for a minute. I just seem to get away with it. It's a my no, brain's still active. You know what? You're getting away. Let, let me talk to you about this, right? <laughs> okay. You are literally getting away with it, and it will catch up with you. Mm. So, I, let, let me name two people who needed five hours sleep a night: Margaret Thatcher, Ronald Reagan. So, oh. what do they both have in common? Uh, they're in the country. Alzheimer's. Oh. Oh, great. There's All a right. massive, there's a massive link with degenerative brain disease and lack of sleep. Well, there's a topic for a new book. I don't, I don't, I don't need to write the book. It's already been written. Right. It's sleep. Why we sleep. Read the book, Why We Sleep, or listen to the book, Why We Sleep, and you will, I guarantee, after listening to that book, because you want audio books, I know. Yeah. After you've listened to that book, you will be like, 
oh shit i need a lot more sleep i'm going to find more sleep well ironically that was danny yeah, a couple of years ago, I decided that I'd just give drinking a miss for 12 months, and I did that. And then this year, after coming back from, uh, where did I go, China, Bangladesh, and India, I decided, uh, my partner said, well, how about going vegetarian? So we've, um, I said, well, let's go vegan. So I've been a vegan for the last 11 months, and I'm actually, every year, I adopt something new that's a wee bit radical. So, yeah. uh, hey, it might be sleep. So but, have you have you started drinking again? Yeah, I have, but um, yeah, I have, but uh, yeah, I do really, but not. I, I don't like habits, and I. So would you would yeah. you consider after you, after your twelve months up, would you start to eat meat again? No, not. I, I listen to the Game Changer, and I love the plant based diet. And now, when yeah. we even go into the West Coast, which um, their cafes aren't very good, finding food at a cafe that you can eat is always one thing on the menu. And so it's kind of like, I think you, I think it was you, you when, in one of your books, you talked about how you went to, I could be that wrong, you went to a Chinese shop and ordered number 37. Yeah, that and was they my dad. It. Yeah, my dad that was brilliant. It and flip it. <laughs> yeah, and, and that was brilliant because um, I like trying new things. And every time I go to a restaurant, I always try to pick something on the menu I haven't had. And that's, that's obviously from you. How about oh, that? That's good. <laughs> Thanks for that. <laughs> so no, it does... I hope you're feeling good on um, not having meat. That's great. That's a really, I mean, what a positive thing to do, not just for yourself, but for the world. Yeah, well, it's um, not really doing it for those reasons, but there's always a, a an outcome when you go down a path. There's a, you, you, you know, the conversations you have with other people. Um, yeah. You know, like, funny enough, yesterday uh, we ordered nachos. Now, when you order nachos, there's no cheese on them, of course, and the lady who delivered them, I, I ate them, and um, and they were brilliant. So I went back and said, oh, can we order a, another set of nachos? And then when she delivered them, I said, oh, normally we don't go to town on ordering in case the meal's no good. And uh, so she got chatting to us and finishes up that she's an author. And um, I do a bit of travel writing. So next thing she's, because we've had that conversation with her, she brought out her book, and we basically got to meet everyone in Blackball. And it was just such oh, a great wow. experience. But, you know, just because you do things different, it creates opportunities. And here we are talking to a lady who looked like the waitress, and she's actually the owner of the complex. And now she's showing us a book, and we're having a great and deep story with her. So that's what it's all about, isn't it? Love it. Love it. Interesting question. Are you an extrovert or an introvert? I'm absolutely an introvert. I'm famous for my... Yeah, that's... um, Yeah. What do you think? I mean, come on, my job. I'm a professional speaker. I stand on stage all over the world and and get people to be brilliant. I am a total yeah. extrovert, absolute extrovert. Yeah, but I, I would sometimes say people are introverts, but when they need to, they'd be an extrovert. No, I'm an extrovert. Excellent. I'm a complete show off. I'm absolutely, seriously, I have to stop myself all the time. Good stuff, man. Um, so like, I if we have... Um, so we have a group of six of us and we're called the Super Supper Six. And it was six of us used to live next to each other. And we no longer do. And now, most recently, we've been in Super Supper Six on Zoom. So right. we sit there and everybody eats the same thing at the same time. And we try to recreate a dinner party as best as possible. And I have to sit and bite my tongue not to go. I've got a good story about that. Or oh, here's an idea. <laughs> Uh, story have you thought about that and i can feel my wife kicking me sometimes when i start because <laughs> i am a terrible show off i'm an extrovert well the next question is perfect for you mate how would your friends describe you extrovert <laughs> <laughs> too easy man too easy you know <laughs> i think i would like to think that they would describe me as a a generous person mm-hmm. I, I really do believe that the secret of living is giving so i'm always wanting to do something for people. Um, I would hopefully think that they were describe me as a fun person mm. because I do enjoy having a laugh. And I would also like to think that my friends would consider me to be reliable because I do have a, a real strong belief that if you say you're going to do something for somebody, you follow through and you do it no matter what. Yeah. No matter what. I reckon that is a key thing I, I, I own a business networking company, right? 
and I, I get people along, and the amount of people who think they're professionals who say but don't do blows me away. And it just, I just go, why do that? Exactly. You know, and yeah. because you know why? It's it's because it's so easy to say it. Your ego says it, mm. and it, and then it's your heart that completes it. And yeah. some people don't have big enough hearts. Yeah, and two more questions. Know. Three more questions. Yeah, did let's I, do it. Did I not count these? Um, what did you want to be when you were small? Um, I want. To, <laughs> well, I'm still small. <laughs> <laughs> What do I want to be really when I was small. young? Okay, what do I want to be when I was young? Do you know, I, I, um, I think the pop star thing from probably about the age of 13. My first band was called the Obnoxious Goblins. Wow. And, um, and I thought we were going to be brilliant. There was only one problem, which is that we were shit. <laughs> I mean, really, really, really bad. The Obnoxious Goblins had nothing going from them other than the name and an image. And and then the, in my, the band that I did quite well in, I realized that actually you have to work hard. You have to, you need talent. And what, and, you, what uh, did you do? You're a singer or the, what did you do? Well, I, I, I owned a keyboard. Oh. <laughs> Didn't mean I could play it, but <laughs> I owned a keyboard. But one of the things I learned how to do, Danny, was that, do you like the Pet Shop Boys? Yeah, yeah, yeah. at the time they were amazing. Everybody, like, everybody likes the Pet Shop Boys. Yeah. And one of the brilliant things the Pet Shop Boys would do would be to program keyboards. So you can, if you know how a sequence works, if you know how to, to what a bass line should sound like, you can program it and then just press play. And then once yeah. you press play, you can just entertain people. So the right. keyboard player was often like the really boring person stood behind the, like doing all that type of stuff, plinky, blinky, blonky. Whereas I used to just press play and go run around the stage playing a tambourine and like, you know, vertical mic stand. Ooh, ah. Ba -da -ba -da, all that sort of stuff and that's what yeah. i would do and that's that's why i thought i wanted to be a pop star couldn't sing yeah Just, i've got a musical bone in my body um all right so um we'll ask you a couple of other questions informally after this but where, uh, where do you want to travel to in the world next are you a traveler yeah i mean i travel all the time last year we were away from home 158 nights out of the year I promised my wife, I said, in 2020, we will travel a lot less, I promise you. And I tell you what, Danny, I have been true to my word. We have <laughs> traveled a lot less. Um, but where we're going to go to now, I mean, I'll probably go to the places where I just feel so comfortable, like Ibiza. We go to a, play, a little island just off Ibiza called Formentera, which not many people yeah. know, but it's like Ibiza was in the 70s. Right. And it's amazing. So we spend a lot of time there. We travel around Europe. We tra we love traveling by train. So we travel around train. By mm. Because of what's happening in America, we'll now go back to America. We wouldn't visit America while Trump was president. That was a yeah. strong principle of ours. We oh, he still is president. Well, yeah, he still is. Of course he is, yeah. <laughs> When's this going out? <laughs> you can imagine. This is going out in February, Michael. Oh, shit. Um, <laughs> yeah. like, wow. you know, so this is... This is uh, so I, I'll go back to America now. But you know yeah. where I haven't been, which I really want to go to, is Canada. Yeah. And uh, our daughter has just started to work for a Canadian company. Oh, awesome. And so she went over to Canada for three weeks as part of her induction. Yeah. And she's like, "You, Mom, Dad, you've got to come to Canada. It's unbelievable. It's, it's amazing. So, yeah, yeah, I went from America to Canada. And on the way, I went from um, New York through to Ni Niagara. And yeah. I remember going through customs and the Canadian people said, oh, welcome to Canada and enjoy your stay. And and I thought, wow, really friendly, man. This is great. And then on the way back into America, I got like interrogated by the Americans. <laughs> you, know, you know, just I couldn't believe the difference. And they thought you're really close, yeah. but you're so far away. But America is a brilliant country, though. I mean, that's the thing. America, the, the people are, I mean, half of them are complete Fruit Loops. We know that. <laughs> Yeah. And but the other half are the most incredible people. Yeah. And I, I run these groups online, and the and we have these amazing American members, and they put so much in. I mean, they are constantly give, give, give. What can I do for you? You know, mm. they really believe it. They chop them in half, and it's hospitality right through, and that's mm. great. I love all that. 
every night I go to bed and I listen to CNN news and I just can't, it's like watching a, a movie unfold and I just can't get over, you know, Why what you watch they're that? into. Why do you Sorry? watch that? Why are you just, watching that? I think the human psychology behind it, I mean, it's like the in a movie they can't see themselves. You know, and the news is always. No, but the you same. know what, but Danny, when you watch that, have you ever heard of something called Mean World Syndrome? No. <laughs> Educate so me. Mean World Syndrome is where when you you look out at the world and you see meanness. Yeah. Because that's what the news reports. They're gonna point out all the things that are wrong. They're gonna say all the bad stuff. So mm. I, I listen to the news. I listen to the don't watch it. I listen to it once a day and I listen to it in the morning. And it's, I get out the shower and I turn and I say to my phone, I, I'll not say the words now because it'll fire up and do it, but I, I go, hey, um, <laughs> give me hey, the, sorry. Give me the yeah, <laughs> BBC uh -huh. News headlines. And Oops. I get the BBC News headlines and it takes about six minutes okay. and that's all I need for the day. Podcast coming up. Oh my goodness. Now it's totally uh, you see, you've done it. You've set it away. Yeah, I'm I, listening. I, I, I'm I listening. Usually... I do Alexa, actually. Alexa, the same deal. I say, uh, yeah. tell me the news. It's quite a good way of doing it. You're right, though. I mean, you do, it is what you, you, you kind of get yourself in a bit of a trance and your routine sometimes, you yeah. know. But um, I think I'm strong enough. Last question, but doesn't mean we have to shut off. It's to describe the biggest lesson you've learned in business. It's probably, yeah. Uh... The biggest lesson I've learned in business is that um, you are better than you think. Mm -hmm. And the way I learned that lesson was because I went into a partnership with two other guys um, and I lost my company. Um, I, I was the minority shareholder. I, we ended up employing about 80 people. We did every type of training you could imagine. We ended up owning an outward bound center. We did leadership stuff. We did health and safety, everything you could imagine. But the money came in from the Michael Heppel events. Right. So if Michael Heppel was doing an event, we got the big money. And, and I was left with 12.5% of the profit. Yeah. And all the other stuff, which I was working hard at helping and developing and putting out there, just basically paid the bills. And I had, you know, 12.5% of a tiny bit with that. Yeah. And, I'm, and I signed that over. And then I had to buy my own company back when it all started to fall apart. And it was always going to, I yeah. had to buy my own business back. Imagine that. Buy, the company was called Michael Heppel Limited. And hmm. Michael Heppel had to buy Michael Heppel Limited Crazy. from two other people who didn't own it. And all the IP and everything that went with that. And we had to remortgage our house and we had to do everything. And you know what? At the end of it, my coach said to me, he said, Michael, you know what? You're better than you think. Hmm. And he said, most people are. They're a lot better than they think. So just remember yeah. that. I think you've got to believe yourself. I lost my way a wee while ago. And, and that's why I'm doing everything under my own brand now. And and I, I think, you know, 20 years ago, I'm talking, and I wish I didn't, because I'd probably be somebody else now, but I still believe yeah. in myself. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. But Danny, I mean, you're, you're 50, you know, age. Yeah, I know. I know. That's great. It's just a start. <laughs> now, um, people who have been listening to this probably have figured out who you are, what you do, but uh, tell us a bit about yourself. This is your opportunity to answer those questions. People wondering who you are. I know you're an author. You've inspired me a lot more than you probably realise uh, with Flip It, the, the first book I listened to uh, that you well, wrote. I appreciate that. Yeah. So, yeah, so I'm Michael Heppel. I'm a speaker, author, and teacher and coach. So I, I'm very, very fortunate that you know, my main job is I stand on stage and I present. My second job is that I write books. I'm an author. Mm. Um, I've written eight books now, of which um, seven have been, or six have been bestsellers. One's been a Sunday Times number one bestseller. That's Flip It, the one that you're talking about. Oh, yeah. There. And, um, and I'm, I am so, so fortunate that I do something where every single day I, I kind of pinch myself and think, are people actually paying me to do this? People want yeah. me to do something I would do for free and they're going to pay me for it. So that's my job. Yeah. That's the trick though, isn't it? You find something you're passionate about and, and, and do that for a living. Uh, yeah. You don't feel it's like you dream. work. It's the uh, dream, absolutely. Yeah. And you're obviously under lockdown at the moment. Um, you, you said you went out hiking earlier on so you, you can actually do physical stuff. I think the physical fitness is actually... Um, really important you know to be able to do that 
do you know there's something just about movement and air and you know going out and like it's like it's cold here at the moment you know we mm. were like four, four degrees today out walking and we live in the north of england so we live in the, the cold part and but you know some it's just getting wrapped up and getting out there and and breathing and enjoying mm. we live in a beautiful part of the world there's no doubt at all about that and people are sat there watching you know netflix and doing box sets and i'm thinking yeah. you know it, each to their own i mean whatever people want to do people should do their own thing you know it's um some people zig some people zag that's fine but yeah i i, I love what i do yeah good on you. well i really appreciate your time and also coming on to the show uh, and I'm, um, I look forward to actually uh, following you, and I'll have to come along to a couple more of your webinars. Well, just... you know the way, just kind of said, Danny, that we one of the things that I that I did before lockdown, I did about a month and a half before the whole COVID COVID thing started. But what really made it massive was the whole co- worldwide COVID thing. Was I have a, um, a a Facebook group called How to Be Brilliant? Yep, and. I set that up because I wrote a book called How to Be Brilliant. A lot of people know me for How to Be Brilliant. And I, to be honest, I thought if 100 people get involved with this and they just share good news and positive stuff and they're there for each other, won't that be great? And then the COVID thing started and now we have 2,900 members. Hmm. And it is the beacon of positivity. Yeah. So anybody who's watching or listening, come and join us on How to Be Brilliant and just hmm. have a look at what, humankind can do and how people are there for each other and the stuff they share and the passion and their enthusiasm it really is it's heartwarming it's brilliant you should do it and i I really believe that i think it's the time to look after each other and ask that question how you are and actually wait for a response Mm -hmm. people um and and listen more than talk (laughs) you know because you really have to couldn't agree more all right, mate. Well, thank you for coming along, as I said, and uh, hopefully I'll have this online very soon and we can both watch each other and see how well we did. <laughs> thank you so much. I really appreciate inviting me, Danny, and keep up doing your amazing work. People are loving it and people need more of you sharing your great stuff. Thank no, you. Too kind. Good on you, mate. Thank you.